You're welcome to the broadcast today. I'm glad to come to you again. It's awesome to share the word of God again and just have a great time. When we are faced with realities, two, three realities, and we have several realities, what becomes our reality all depends on what you are focused on, what you zoom into, what you see. Uh, I like how God asked Jeremiah, what do you see? Because what you see in the realms of faith is your reality. It defines what's real to you. Uh, we take, for instance, a subject that I want to discuss today. When Jesus called, when Jesus was walking on water in the midst of the raging, the sea, the water was windy and everywhere was chaotic and he comes to his disciples walking on water he comes to them walking on water and eventually he reached uh, peter saw him they were afraid but everybody saw him but peter asked can i come is it you he asked first of all is it you and he says yeah it is i he says can i come and jesus asked him to come and he walked on water so then why do you think that peter was able to walk on water was it because the water was generous enough to hold his weight? Was it because the water was solid? No. Was it because Jesus asked him to come? If we say it's because J Jesus asked him to come that he was able to walk on water, we would be right, but we will not be fully right because when he began to sink, Jesus hadn't changed his mind. Jesus didn't change his mind. So what makes him, what made him to begin to sink? We have to realize that most times the fact that God calls us to do something or God bid us to come, this is not the only thing that is important to see us through the journey because God may not have changed his mind, but we may have lost focus. We may have been looking in another direction. Peter began to sink and Jesus didn't change his mind. Jesus hadn't said, Oh, don't worry, I, I, I don't want you to come anymore, just stay back in the boat. But he was sinking in spite of the fact that Jesus had asked him to come. Hallelujah. So, there, was, there must have been something else important. And that's what I want to talk about today. That, that, that thing is what I want to talk about today. In the realms of faith, I say it again. In the realms of faith, what you are focused on, it determines what you see. It determines what, in turn, is real to you. And what is magnified before your eyes is what is real to you. As long as Peter focused on Jesus, he didn't sink. As long as he focused on Jesus, the ability of Jesus was real to him. Hallelujah. But as soon as his focus shifted to the water, the ability of the water became real to him. What is most real to you is what you are focused on. Now watch this. These are two realities that he is faced with. Oh yes. Two. Peter is faced with two verifiable realities. Jesus is walking on water. Absolutely. It's right before everyone's eyes. The water can drown anyone, it's, it, no, it does not need to be said. So then, in the midst of these two, up two realities, which one is going to be his experience? It's, it turns out that his experience, the one that he is going to experience, is the one that he is focused on. Not the one that's real, not what's unreal, but what he is focused on. On, what his eyes are fixed on, what he sees, what he's looking at, what he's concentrating on, what gets his attention. It was all about what his focus was. Not the circumstances, but his focus. The circumstance was undeniable. The, the, the circumstance was a constant. Jesus, the, 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 the way the sea was, was uh, the water was all stormy, Jesus is walking on water, all of that, those were realities and they are constant but his focus is the variable 
And that's what determined his experience. So sometimes reality is relative. It it's just depends on what's real to you. Your focus determines your reality and your reality determines your experience. It's all about what your eyes are set on. Peter's eyes are set on Jesus. And as long as his eyes were set on Jesus, he is having the Jesus experience. But as soon as his eyes turned away from Jesus and began to focus on the water and how stormy, how, how the waves are raging, he begins to have the water experience. When his focus was on Jesus, he experienced the power of Jesus. But when his focus shifts to the water, he's experiencing the power of the water. And he began to sink. In life, we go through some circumstances like this. Water in this context is anything that has the ability to drown you. Anything that has the ability to submerge you. Anything that has the ability to take you down. You are going to have to make a choice between focusing on that or focusing on the power of God because that is also an absolute reality. It's an absolute reality. The water is an absolute reality. It can drown you. It can take you down the circumstance. Yes, uh, it, can, it, 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 it can take you down. Uh, but the power of God is also real. It, God is also able to deliver. He's able to set you free. He's able to do what no man can ever do. It, it all depends on what you're focused on. The, the interesting thing is that the, the water had the ability to drown Peter all the while. Not only, the water did not begin to have the ability to drown him only when he began to sink. The water had the ability to drown, drown him all the while. It was, but he was not drowning because his focus was on Jesus. Oh yes, he was not drowning because his focus is on the word. Jesus is the living word. You will come through circumstances in life and situations that have the ability to take you down. But if you will set your focus on the word, on the power of God, on the spirit of God, and on God's ability, you are going to stay on top of that raging situation as though it is a solid ground. As though it is a solid ground. You know, when he began to doubt, he really did not begin to doubt per se. He began to have faith in something else. What happened was his faith shifted from the ability of Jesus to the ability of the water. And that's why he began to drown. But if we will focus on the word, which is Christ himself, oh, glory to God, and refuse to take anything else other than what the word of God says, refuse to believe anything else other than the word, we will begin to experience. Experience, we begin to have the Jesus experience like Peter. When, when the word of God becomes our reality, it automatically becomes our experience. Because we, when it becomes the most real thing to us, it becomes automatically what we are experiencing in our daily life. Watch this. They are on board of the boat. But Jesus walking on water tells Peter to come. Jesus is calling him to come on board. Oh, glory to God. He's on board on something else. But when Jesus saw him, Jesus, when he saw Jesus and said, bid me to come, and Jesus says, come, Jesus says, come on board. Jesus says, come on board. Come on board the supernatural. Leave the realm of the natural and come experience the supernatural getting on board with god will always take you on a supernatural journey it will take you off the natural into the supernatural dimension of your life it was actually on board in the natural but he got on board with jesus on the supernatural how amazing what a wonderful thing God is calling you to get on board on the supernatural. The natural is no longer safe. It's time to get on the supernatural. Amazing. Praise the Lord. 
glory. They are on board on a supernatural boat uh, and it was stormy. Jesus wanted them to come on board the supernatural and ride on the storms of life. When you get on board with Christ, you begin to ride on the supernatural. Oh yes. And you begin to ride and glide on the storms of life as though they never existed. That is what the power of God can do. Glory to God. Oh yes. The, the boat in the natural. The boat in the natural was the safest place to be. But Jesus did not need the boat. Glory to God. <laughs> Jesus did not need the boat, even though it was the safest thing, the safest place to be. Rather, he was, rather he was calling them to sail with him. Oh, yes. Rather, he was calling them to sail with him, to ride with him, to walk with him. You have to be willing to let go of the natural in order to embrace the supernatural. Oh, yes. Supernatural becomes the natural to you when you walk with God. It becomes the, your natural habit. So Peter got off the boat and began to walk with Jesus. You will experience God to the degree that you are willing to walk with him. Peter, take, look, Peter is in the boat with a bunch of believers in Christ. Now, this is the part I want you to get. But he got off the boat in order to be with Christ. Let me say that again. He's on board with believers and disciples of Christ, believers in Christ. But he gets off the boat that he may be with Christ. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, I, 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 I understand that we have to leave the world behind. We have to leave the things and the passion and the loss of the world in order that we should be with Jesus. But how about when the people you have to leave behind are believers? How about when the things you have to leave behind are, 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 are things within the household, but to a higher dimension, God calling you to a higher dimension in an, to a higher experience with him? How about when you have to get off the boat with off the boat of some believers who just don't share the kind of appetite that you share that you have they just don't share they, they don't share the kind of appetite that you have for the things of God you just feel a deeper calling I don't know who I'm talking to God is calling you to get off that boat because he wants you to step on to a higher dimension in your walk with him and the people don't be apologetic about it the people you're going to leave behind is not sinners it's 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 the disciples it's 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 the believers that people who just don't see things they don't see what you see they don't have the hunger that you have they don't have the appetite that you have you got to not you have to stop apologizing and get on board with jesus Leave that boat, step out of that boat and get on board with Jesus. He's calling you to a higher dimension. Yes, you've left unbelieving friends, uh, but you're, you've left unbelieving friends, but you're going to have to leave some believers too. Uh, because uh, don't get shocked. Be, don't get shocked because of that. Because uh, my, 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 my. So it's because of the appetite that God has put inside of you for more. Uh, I don't know who I'm speaking to you desire more you are something in you is crying for more something in you is hungry for more it's time to step out of that boat yes it's full of believers but that's not what your destiny is yes it's full of believers but that's not what your calling is that's not where your future is get on board with Jesus and get off the boat my God that word is for somebody. Thank you, Lord. It's time for you to get off that boat. Get off that boat. Get off that boat right now. This is your time. Don't miss your season. Don't miss your moment. This is a time of divine manifestation. The reason God has been showing you what he's showing you is because he's calling you, my God. It's because he's calling you to himself. He showed you what he showed you that he may draw you nearer. It's time to get off and get 
on. Get off the boat. Get on board with Jesus. My God, this is your moment. Don't miss your moment. God bless you. This is your moment. Get on board with Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He called you, faithful is he who called you, and who is able to perform it. He is able to perform what he said. Get on board. Glory to Jesus. Peter got on board, got off board of some boats of believers in order to get an experience with Jesus. In order to get an experience with Jesus, don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. Oh, yes. Leave whoever you have to leave behind. Leave whatever you have to leave behind. This is the moment that God is calling you to a higher experience with him. And don't get me wrong. When you get off the boat, at first it's going to seem like you're sinking. At first it's going to look like you're about to drown. At first it's going to look like you're about to fail. Don't worry. Faithful is he who has called you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. The word never means never. He will never, ever, ever, ever leave you nor forsake you. It's because you're about to go in a higher dimension. Yes, when Peter got off, at some point he was sinking. Uh, that if, he, if, he, if he would have not gotten off that boat, he wouldn't have sunk. But we thank God for his mercy and grace. What his grace has provided for is waiting for you. He will hold your hand. He will hold your hand. He that is able to keep you from falling will hold your hand yes even though it seems like things are not working right now because you got off the boat my goodness it's because you got on the supernatural uh, the path the boat of god's supernatural supply my god the boat of god's supernatural divine providence where god himself is going to be the one to hold you up don't worry if it seems like you're sinking. Jesus is going to hold your hand. What the other disciples did not experience, Peter experienced it. Because he got off the boat. You got off the boat that you might experience God in a new way. This is your moment. Congratulations if you've gotten off the boat. And if you haven't, God is calling you. I don't know what kind of boat. You don't have to leave some relationship if you don't have to. But if you have to, it's no longer safe to stay in that relationship. You have got to get off that boat and embrace. Come on the water walking boat where you don't need the boat to walk on water because Jesus himself is the boat. <laughs> Jesus himself is now your boat. Glory to God. He will hold your hand. He will sustain you. He will uphold you. He will keep you from falling. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And one thing I want to point out is that Jesus walked on water first before Peter walked on water. Mm -hmm. My, 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 my. Uh, that's important to note because if Jesus would have not walked on water, Peter would not have seen anything. We would not have had a scenario where they're having dinner or they're in a friend's house and Peter is suggesting to Jesus, Master, how about walking on water? What do you think? Do you think we can walk on water? That will not have happened at all. It was because he saw Jesus walking on water. It was because he saw Jesus walking on water. Anytime God is moving in certain ways in your life, he is suggesting something to you. Oh, glory to God. Anytime God is moving in certain ways in your life, his God is suggesting something to you. Oh, my, my, my. When Jesus was walking on water, he was suggesting it to the disciples. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm excited about this. Peter walked on water because Jesus, Peter walked on water because Jesus did it first. That's why. 
<laughs> ah, Jesus did it first for him to see. And then it became an inspiration for him. My God, God won't give you something to smell if he does not want you to have a taste of it. My goodness. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's a matter, the word taste is a matter of experience. No one can taste something on your behalf. Oh, glory to God. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good. So he says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's a function of experience. Do you know that no one can taste something for you? You can't delegate that. You cannot, you can't delegate somebody to taste something for you. You have to taste for yourself. You, 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 you can't outsource that. You have to taste it for yourself. So God is calling you. I know people have told you of God's goodness, what God did for someone and what you've seen around you. God is saying it's time for you to have your own experience. If God is whetting your appetite with something and exposing you to something, it's because he wants you to have it. My goodness. God won't be exposing you to something he, he does not want you to have. It either is going to be bringing you to bringing something to your environment or bringing you to an environment where that thing is. Both ways, God is trying to inspire you into something. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. This is your time. God is exposing you to greatness because there is some greatness about you. God is exposing you to power because he's bringing you to the place of power. God is exposing you to science, miracles, and wonders because he wants you to have it. God is exposing you to leadership because he has a leadership calling upon your life. God is exposing you to all sorts of things because he is bringing you the same blessing. Glory to God. This is your moment. Don't miss your moment. Embrace it. Embrace what God is exposing exposing you to. Embrace the direction that God is taking you to. Embrace the new thing that God is doing in your life. Embrace what is inspiring you, inspiring you to do because God is up to something new in your life. You are blessed and highly favored. That's why you've gone through all you've gone through. But this is your moment. Greatness is knocking on the door. You are about you are next you are next in line for a miracle glory to god be not afraid be not dismayed whatever storms that you have been going through god is coming to you walking on that storm is using it as his transportation is using that storm riding on it as his footstool glory to god because he's got something in mind that the enemy cannot change God has got something for you that the enemy cannot alter. That is why the enemy is trying to distract you with the wave. My God, that is why the enemy is trying to distract you with the storm. Because he knows that he cannot alter God's plan for you. But he figures if I can send a little wave, if I can send a little storm, if I can send a little tossing around on the boat, is uh, going to distract them. Uh, my goodness, they're going to be afraid. But Jesus has come to you walking on that storm, showing off his power, showing off his miracles, and telling you step out because he is got your back. He's got your back. God's got your back. I came to let you know he's got your back. Oh yes, nothing shall be impossible to you. This is your moment. This is your time. Yes, step into glory, step into the supernatural, step in, step out of the natural boat and step in with Jesus. Get on board with him. You are not going to regret it. 
this is your time this is your moment he came to them walking on water what has been given them a nightmare uh, my 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 is what he uses as a footstool as a platform my goodness showing them that it means nothing to him your troubles mean nothing to him your storm is nothing to him my goodness the miracle that you need is nothing before him my goodness it is but a small thing in the eyes of the Lord. Notice that he did not come, my goodness, my, 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 my. He, he did this to show the authority, that he has authority over what troubled them. My, 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 my. He was he, to show them that he has authority over it. He did not rebuke the wind. He did not rebuke the water. He walked on it. <laughs> he used it as a platform to give them a supernatural experience. Glory to God. <laughs> Whatever has been troubling you, God is using it as a platform to demonstrate his power. God is using it as a platform to give you a supernatural experience. God is using it as a platform to give you a testimony that you will never, ever, ever, ever forget. That's why Jesus did not rebuke it. He walked on it. He stepped on it rather. He put it under his feet. Oh, when he walked on water, he put what was troubling them under his feet as a sign of his authority over it. God is showing you, letting you know today, God wants me to let you know that whatever has been troubling you, my goodness, as a sign of his authority over it, he has put it under his feet. Therefore, it's under your feet because Christ lives in you christ in you the hope of glory he wants to reveal is going to reveal his glory through that same storm <music>